All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the patch notes. Uh, let's take a look at what's cooking. It's very sad that this patch is coming out now because, you know, the LEC is just starting three weeks of play on these patches. I don't envy uh, Riot's position because they need to ship patches ahead of time and they kind of need to predict the trajectories of uh, pro play. And I think that's, um, you know, super important. I thank you very much, Dripping Wesson, for Tier 1. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, that part of it is very, you know, crazy. The fact that they need to predict patches and Riot really want to make sure that champions are still playable, but they're not picking ban. You know, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to phase out champions and make them still uh, be relevant. And I have to say that they 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 made that with Lushinami very successfully. Lushinami is a, cha a, a duo that we saw for a very long time. And now it's at the point where it's more used as a counter and picked in special slots and it still has its niches. And I think that's very good for draft. I think that's very exciting for draft. The other position is you have Riot with massive fuck ups in the likes of Yumi. Yumi is one of those champions that um, they've tried to nerf ever slightly and face out of the pro play, but it was consistently not working. Right. So there's the other side of it. Double edged sword. But let's uh, just jump into it. Okay. Yumi. So I've already reacted to these Yumi changes. And I think the issue I have with these Yumi changes is that it will still be insanely frustrating to play against in solo queue. Uh, this is going to uh, create a circumstance where this champion is going to be very, very extreme in the cases where it's strong. If this champion is allowed to scale, it is looking quite dangerous in my opinion. I'm happy that they removed the adaptive force. I'm happy that they removed the heal and made that into a shield instead. Uh, we have gotten to the point where shields, there are so many shields in the game right now. Like it's insane amount of shields. It's like, I'm just waiting for people to play more Rel because she removes shields and we're gonna see more uh, Blitzcrank because she removes shields, powers Renekton W, Serpent's Fang. Uh, we have Shadow Flame countering shields, you know, all of these. The, the, the weird part about these tools that are there to counter shields, so to speak, are also wonky. And you can't really pick them for that purpose, you know? It's like, who the fuck is Rel? That's a good question. Who is Rel? He can kill you and your shield is gone, but it's like, well, what is that, right? So I know already that this champion has a lot of bugs. Like, she can charge ally tier. Like, that's already fucking weird. That's a bug. Um... Uh, there's this uh, friendship effect. I'm just going to read through this because probably a lot of people didn't uh, see my, my first initial reaction to it. When Yumi spells or attacks affects champion, she heals herself and charges a heal for her allies. If she attaches within the next four seconds, she brings the heal to her ally as well, while attached effect automatically occurs. So basically, uh, compare this to a, a Rakan Q, but it works on spells and attacks. Uh, while attached, Yumi builds friendship with, whenever her ally kills enemy champions and minions. Uh, each ally has their own unique friendship score. While attached to her best friend, Yumi's abilities gain bonus effects. Uh, so the bonus effects, we're going to see them on the abilities. This is just the boop and the heal. Uh, she's going to have extended range when she has this boop. Uh, you know, it's a regular boop, but it gives you a little heal, a little Rakan Q heal. Uh, very similar. Uh, Q prowling projectiles. So the, the scary thing about this ability is that uh, the damage is insanely uh, high when it's uh, best friend empowered. Uh, when I look at the base damage of this, it kind of spooks me. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's definitely looking quite spooky when I look at this number here. Uh, 380 base damage, that is going to be monstrous. Uh, that is going to, like, one-shot you in the forehead. Boom. I think there's so many things in this kit that incentivizes you to just get a Magi and to hope that the game plays in your favor because this champion is going to be a scaling beast. I still haven't had a chance to try how easy it is to land this Q. Uh, this, da like... Um, it is, uh, it is uh, such a high base number value. But let's look at the whole ability. This ability slow uh, will always be empowered on hitting enemy champions. Also grants on hit uh, damage to her allies for 5 seconds. This damage is increased by up to 75% based on her critical strike chance. So basically they wanted to create a situation where Yumi is not only tied and good with the champions that buy Ginzu. They wanted to give it uh, some kind of scaling. Because of course Ginzu applies on hit effects multiple times. So it's better with on hit effects, right? And they wanted to give it some kind of scaling with crit so they don't feel, uh, you know, bad about being like a crit building champion to have this. Uh, but obviously this on hit effect is pretty decent, you know, it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I think it's just additional damage, you know. I don't understand why it's there, but it's there. 
Okay, so just bonus damage. Um, I'm assuming it's magic damage. Um, and that's like positive. You know, it's positive in some cases. When you have LDR, it feels a little bit worse. But nevertheless, Q cooldown is rather low. Uh, mana cost is also rather low. Um, damage is it's like the damage when you're on uh, like when you're not on someone doesn't really matter i think that uh, the main question is how hard is this to hit uh this is borderline a root 80 percent decaying over two seconds that's a really big slow uh this is um this is kind of crazy i feel like the at least a lot of skill is being put into this ability is what i imagined right because you can kind of bend like beckham you can do some stuff right uh, but I'm kind of curious to see how easy it is to hit uh, this missile. That is what it's going to come down to. At least, you know, um, you can't control the Empowered Q. You can control it for a duration and then it shoots off, right? So it's basically, it's old Yumi Q un until it reaches a certain point and then it just fires. You know, like a, a Vex Q, right? So you have 0 0.75 seconds to direct it and to move it and then boom. It speeds up, accelerates, and then it sends itself in one direction, right? So, uh, the main question for me is how easy is this going to be hit, right? Can I do, like, moves? Like, it's also about the range, right? Because I think the range of this ability is also longer. And can I do, like, bend it like Beckham situations where I go into, let's say, the terrain, and then I fire out, you know? Like, th this looks very nasty. Like, if you hit this, this, this seems like such a big reward here, 380 damage. But keep in mind, right... It's like in the past it had percentage max health damage and it was good to poke with and percentage like max I think it, I don't know if it was current health or max health damage what it was but all in all you know that's that's pretty juicy you know Yumi and her attached ally will no longer receive adaptive force bonus stats Yumi's W no longer counts as a positive boom for summonary which is a very big deal right very big deal here because a big combo for Yumi's where they went uh, Moonstone and then they would proc Moonstone with their Airy. And then they would play, like this is what a lot of the strong Yumi players is, that they would proc Moonstone on cooldown, do it very effectively with the help of Airy. Because you're practically inside the target. And the closer you are to a target, the faster the Airy cooldown comes back to you. Because it's this little, little cute little pet that gets, sends itself out and then you have to pick it up to reduce the cooldown. And then you're back to the inside the enemy, so the cooldown is as small as possible. So you would proc Moonstone with the help of summon Airy. Uh, so this is a big deal. Yumi gains an additional 10 to 20% healing shield power. This is also uh, works with, of course, uh, with... Uh, what's her name? Uh, the, the Shirelia, right? Yumi gains an additional 10%, 10 to 20% healing shield power based on ally level, and her best friend gains 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 on hit healing. This is affected by Yumi's healing shield power. So this is probably an ability that you want to max last. Um... 4% AP scaling is like decent. This is just, you know, the main thing that I'm thinking about when I see this is this is going to, if you have any support items on Yumi, they're going to be perma procced. Is what I'm assuming. Basically, it's like if this counts as healing that Yumi is doing, then Arden Sensor and, and uh, whatever buffing items are going to be perma on. Garden Yumi could be an interesting proposition, right? Because attack speed scales off of E and you get uh, the shield. Garden Yumi could be a thing. It isn't uh, completely out of the question. So every, pro every auto should proc it. I don't know if this counts as the healing that Yumi makes or if it counts as healing that uh, the opponent makes. So like I, I, I probably made the mistake of not testing out Yumi things here because I'm just leaving you guys with more questions. But this is where my initial thoughts go. Now shields allies instead of healing, which is a good thing, right? I, I think that's a positive change. It's like the sh the, the shield uh, is it, it decays, like the shield decays with, the, I mean, the slow decays, and it just lasts for three seconds. It's going to be less oppressive. It feels like the damage that you do in lane actually matters. The damage that you do in fights actually matters, and they're not going to heal to full. That's going to be like pretty good, you know. That's that's a, that's a decent decent change. Yumi restores mana to her anchor. Um, in increased by up to 100% based on their mid missing mana. I, I don't know why this is in the picture, but um, it's, it's like they are really, really fulfilling the fantasy of this champion being a turbo noob champ. 
It's like, you, you don't have to think at all when you play this champ, honestly. Nothing at all. I, I, I feel like they've changed this champion. I, I don't know how often it will be played in pro play, because I think inherently, probably, it will be too weak in lane, is what I'm feeling. But in solo queue, this is going to be such a pain in the ass. Such a pain in the absolute ass. Is what I'm thinking. A lot of players are going to get away with being bad and play this champ. And it will be so frustrating seeing how bad this player is and they're getting away with it. I think this is... I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like Yumi is forever going to be... Even if we don't see it in pro play, I think it feels so bad to play against Yumi. Uh, just by design. The main thing is, right, is that Yumi got some changes on her health growth and her base stats from previous patches. And, you know, the main thing about Yumi is that she can't really trade that well in lane. That was so, what was so oppressive about, um, of course, Yumi and pro play is that Yumi just does... Like, it just lane so well. It just had a very strong lane. And no long, it no longer does. So I think the, in pro play, in coordinated play, you can actually punish this hard enough. Um, let's look, read final chapter as well. Uh, ability, ability description for 3.5 seconds, Yumi fires 5 magical waves that affect enemies and allies. If cast while attached, Yumi can steer the waves to follow her mouse. Fire that champions, the waves heal. The heal is increased by 130% on her best friend. Like this speed, I would like... I would compare it to maybe like Velkos times 2 in terms of the speed. Um, cooldown up. Magic damage per wave, 20%. Uh, basically, the, the, the damage is higher. Uh, and then you have heal per wave. This is, you know, the unique thing. It's like, the heal is, is, is powerful, but you always have to compare it to other existing heals that are similar, right? It's like, if you compare it to maybe Janold, right? It is something, right? Janna ult is, is, is also something that heals and the potential healing is super, super high. And this, of course, the, the theory of it is that, oh, the potential healing here is really, really big. But the main thing that stands out to me is the best friend bonus. The best friend bonus is crazy. This is where I become concerned about this champ. Waves also grant Yumi's best friend 20, 40, 60 armor and magic resistance for the duration of the spell. The heal is increased by, by 130% on her best friend, so that part of it is also crazy. And um, I think this part is a little bit crazy. This is where things can become very oppressive. In my opinion. It's like if I, if I see... Think about this context, okay? So you have 80 carries, already buying BT, already buying Shield Bow, and now they're gonna get this influx of armor and magic resistance that scales off of Yumi's AP. So basically if you play Yumi, what I would do is I would buy Magi every fucking game. I would buy Magi every fucking game just to make sure that I have AP. AP is gonna be massive. It's like... I'm gonna buy AP, I'm gonna just fucking buy all the AP in the world, I don't need fucking boots, I'm just gonna buy AP. You just need AP. AP, AP. Get raw sources of AP, right? I could see a world where, like, you just play, like, Imperial Mandate. Imperial Mandate into... into fucking Magi, just because 15 AP from Imperial Mandate and you have enough slows to apply Imperial Mandate, and just because Summon Eri doesn't get applied by your W, you can't proc... Uh, Moonstone as often, and you can't proc, um, you know, uh, the Shirelia buff as often, right? And that's like my go-to. My brain is telling me right now, just fucking buy a Mandate, go fucking buy a Magi, and then Death Cap, and then you're gonna reach AP numbers. It's insanity, okay? Think about it. Like, if you reach 300 AP with this champion, you're giving your best friend 30 armor and MR more. So this is going to be, in my mind, just a very strong scaling champion with a relatively weak lane phase, depending on how strong this Q ability is, right? Another thing that I have a harder time to judge is just how the man mana management uh, portion is going to work. 
like how easy is it going to be to 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 manage the mana of of this champion because like if you trade first and you initiate with e and so forth yumi really gets to 16 yes 16 i'm not even looking at the 16 number right this is more for silas thank god yumi never needs to leave her best friend anymore that's how it looks like right and silas is not going to be able to steal this ult because if silas steals this ult uh, he's going to completely sister fist you that is uh, crazy you know but my general impression is this is going to be a lot weaker in pro play because because he of course oh silas doesn't have a best friend you guys are right you guys are right i didn't think about that silas has no best friend fuck my life he has no best friend Never mind, it's not that scary. <laughs> ah, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Something I always just want to pull up is just Yumi in, uh, in, in solo queue. What's going on with Yumi? So you have Yumi here. Yeah, she has gained 7% win ratio. Ooh. Ooh. This is, uh, of course, where the ban rate has increased by 15%. Ooh. The pick rate has increased by 13% almost. Ooh. Right. Okay. So we have Q Max, naturally. Q Max, no points in W. W doesn't make any sense. That, of course, is natural. Ari got super nerfed, so the comment makes sense. You know, you just play Q to poke and to see what's up. I think putting points in W is completely useless and it makes sense. We have a Shurelia into Mikkels here. I guess the healing shield power angle does make sense, but in my mind, what I would try, well, in my mind, oh, as you guys see, Imperial Mandate is 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 where my mind went right of course it's a very small sample size so i'm getting a little bit too excited about this statistic but imperial mandate it's perfect for this champ the amount of slows you have on r your q how it works and you maxing it and the legendary passive 15 ability power is mental so so so, so think about this imperial mandate gives you 15 ability power per legendary item your support item counts as a legendary item Compare this mythic passive. Now I'm going to move over to Everfrost. Let's look at the Everfrost passive. 10 ability power. What happened here? This Everfrost is just getting... What, what happened here? It has 10 AP and this has 15 AP. What is that? What is this? You don't need to buy shoes. You don't need to buy shoes. But just because this legendary passive and the fact that how your kit works, right? And the way it perfectly aligns with your Q cooldown is super, super nice. Right? So basically, how, how my idea would be Imperial Mandate, Mage Eyes. And then the thing is, you have Support Item, Frost Fang. It is going to give you a Mythic Passive. CDR boot for Yumi? No. We need Legendary Passives. We need AP. We need AP. Okay? We need AP. And then Mage Eye. It's like buy Mage Eye every game. Because if you're dying, you're probably losing. So, might as well win harder. I'll buy Magi every game. Tier 2 boots count as a legendary item? No, they don't. That would be broken, my friend. So, it's like, this is the direction I would go. I would go Imperial Mandate into Magi. Obviously, this statistic, you can't look at it, right? Because most people are buying Magi when they are turbo winning. And usually, if you're finishing second super item, you're, you're probably winning, right? Uh, it's like just Magi. I would go Mandate, Magi, Deathcap. Just fucking buy Deathcap. Deathcap. Smack it there. Right? That's what I would do. Uh, we continue. I think this is going to be such a pain in the ass in solo queue. Like, really. Fuck this champ in solo queue. In pro play... I think that it will be picked in very specific spots when the enemy can't counter you. I don't see a world where this, this champion can survive a Nautilus lane or a like a very a Draven lane or Callista lane. You know, all of these things are going to be so fucking hard to, to lane against. But in solo queue, everyone's picking whatever the fuck they want. It's like you have the Zyra OTPs, you have the... You have the... You have the whatever OTPs, you know, you have like a bunch of fucking clown shit, you know, going on in solo queue. Like not everyone's going to be ready to lock in the counters to this. And then this champion will lane and then you like press tab and you see this champion is going even. And then you're like, oh, fuck me, dude. 
Fuck me. Right? And that's that's going to be your life on solo queue. When you have me on your team, I'm going to to pick something to 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 sister fist this champ. Howdy, howdy. Good to see all of you. But yeah, I think in pro play, my impression is that it's not strong enough to be picked always. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe you pick like Ezreal Yumi and you get away with it. Could happen. Right? But this champion needs to get dove and needs to be pressured. And the speed of pro play games is just too fast, in my opinion. It's like often the teams that are getting first drake, second drake, you know, they're already winning. And you're not going to have push bot, no prior bot. If this champion can get through lane phase, really hope he do. But uh, I would go for the AP build, AP heavy build. I think the AP scalings are pretty fucking broken here. It's just there's so many AP scalings in the kit uh, that are so strong, in my opinion. I uh, thank you very much, Japanov, uh, for the subscription. I appreciate it. Aatrox. Maybe she's OP with Nyla. Maybe. Maybe. Nyla fits in the same box as Yumi, right? Nyla, Yumi, both champions, if they can get through lane and farm, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be nutty. And because Nyla, of course, increases the levels that your team gets and so forth. So there's, there's, there's inherent synergy there, right? Because Yumi is going to really enjoy getting skill ups and levels. What about 3.5k health Zeri? Yeah, for sure. It's like if this champion gets to scale, imagine a world where you have that Zeri that has BT and, and Overheal and all that jazz. You're like, fuck me, dude. Can anyone buy Serpent's Fang? That's why I wanted to buy Brom. I wanted to buy Serpent's Fang on Brom because we just needed to cut the shields. Bro. Zeri Yumi is going to be nasty for sure. Zeri is very strong. I think Yumi and solo queue fucking ban this champion, guys. Ban it. Ban it, ban it, ban it, ban it, ban it, ban it. Ban it, baby. Ban it. All right, Aatrox. Very big buff, I'd say. But... Actually, no. It's not a big buff. He maxes last. Maybe there's angles where you max it second? I don't know. I feel like E points are a bit too important. I don't know. Aatrox. Talk to me, Aatrox players. Talk to me, Aatrox players. It's like nothing has changed, right? E putting points in E is just a bit too important. Loading. Loading. It's like this 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 buff here, it's like fuck me. It's it's a, it's like buffing me later in the game. But I, I don't think this matters. I got excited the first about these changes because I thought W cooldown went down 2 seconds on each rank. Because that's a really big deal. 2 seconds on W down each rank is a big deal. But this... This is kind of... Um, it's like... F for you to get stronger when you're level 14, it's like... Uh, it's like a little percentile change, you know? Uh, let's look at this. Ash is cool. Ranger's focus. Power duration, 4 to 6 seconds. Okay. Volley. Damage down. Okay. Enchant and Crystal Arrow. Cooldown down. Hmm, okay. Yeah, Ash, has, Ash, has, Ash has been receiving some nerfs uh, in the support position. They're trying to make a BAD. Um, I think... Um, you know? She... The, the nerfs that Ash has received is that a lot of her adversaries, let's say Nautilus and so forth, have gotten buffed and the super item got changed. Uh, I do think this is a, a hefty nerf, right? 20 cooldown down on Ash. Ash spends the majority of her game in the super position in those level pockets from 6 to 10. That is a big deciding part of the game, right? So having 20 seconds longer cooldown there is, is, a, is a big deal. Because keep in mind how it works with cleanse, right? Uh, when the enemy enemy AD doesn't have cleanse or whatever, like the window of you doing something is going to be thinner, right? 
So we shall see. I think this is a fine nerf. Yeah. Aurelion Soul. Let's see his nerfs. Uh, health growth. Uh, armor growth. Uh, I think in terms of seeing this champion in pro play, let's see. Uh, they did AP damage down. Uh, AP scaling down. Still think this champion is going to scale well, right? I don't think this is a, you know, a big enough change to be like, wow, now Aurelion Soul is not as, as strong. Uh, I think Aurelion Soul was just a little bit too powerful in Soul Q uh, for it to, to stay the same. So I understand this, this nerf. Um, people are very, I don't know, with the discussion or read around this champion, people are very unhappy about this champion, but I think it's, it has a very clear theme. And people are saying, they need to buff his early game, late, uh, buff his early game and nerf his late game. I think it's okay for some champions to be piss weak early. I think that's fine. That's fine. Why is that a problem? Let a champion be weak early game. Not every champion needs to be good at everything and be able to be playable into everything. I don't think that's a League of Legends. Usually, I have to say, most of the time, one tricks have the worst takes on the game because they, they are looking at the game through such a narrow point of view. Not gonna lie. One tricks have a lot of strong input on how to play matchups and how to understand matchups, and I think that's really, really valuable and good, and I use that. But when they're complaining about champion balance, Jesus. It is very, very narrow-minded, in my impression. Which is anecdotal, so take it as you want. Maybe there's one tricks out there that are fantastic. I'm just saying, you know, my impression overall. Because I try to talk with a lot of them. Okay, Azir. Big. Big, big, big. This is a big change. Big change. Base mana down. Big change. Attack damage growth. I really like per uh, perks. Mythy's reasoning. Mythy. Freak. Jesus. Freak's reasoning on this. The attack damage growth buff is for bad Aussie players. Oh, God bless. Okay. Attack speed ratio up. Attack speed growth up. Which means... What does it mean? It means that... Um, He's going to do better with Nash's Tooth, right? Nash's Tooth, the attack speed dream demon, Azir, can happen now. It makes a lot more sense to buy Nash's Tooth because they moved a lot of his attack speed power into the W and now they removed it. But now you can actually buy attack speed and you have attack speed in runes. So they are going to be more valuable. Uh, we're going to have alacrity in runes. So it's going to be more valuable in a lot of cases because most of the time people are playing Conqueror, right? Uh, this is... This is going to be, you know, more in line with what uh, Azir used to be. Which is that, uh, you know, strong late game champion, right? Uh, the Azir Shirima's legacy, 30 seconds duration, uh, bonus damage. We have some, some, some changes here in terms of how the scaling works. I don't think it's too interesting, but the gist of it is, you know... Bug fix, Azir's son will no longer lose armor and magic resist while Azir is untargetable. That's pretty funny, that that's the thing. Um, basically, magic damage. I think the coolest part about this is Azir's son disc will now apply Azir's spell effects as a single target spell. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, I, I think that's interesting, you know, uh, because um, it is... Um, You apply Luden's Echo, uh, you apply Leandri's, you know, that's, that's, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, the main bread and butter, magic damage, uh, mana up, uh, basically the Q poking will be worse. This will be a buff at 200 AP and above, and then you have slower sh soldiers with the passive attack speed, but you get additional damage. A bonus attack speed granted while Azir has three soldiers spawned has been removed. And then you have Shifting Sands, which of course is, is buffed, uh, nerfed. Wait, they're nerfing Shifting Sands. So they're just reverting the buff from before. Okay, that's interesting. The, the AP scaling is just down. I think this champion now, we will see Azir a lot less in pro play. I think this is going to murder Azir in pro play. I don't think we're going to see a lot of Azir in pro play. I don't see... Like, it's completely fucking dead, by the way. Uh, this is this this champion belongs to the one tricks now that want to scale into the game and uh, you know enjoy uh, killing Nashor at a high speed. But I think in terms of pro play, this champion is fucked. I think this champion is. See you later, alligator. Arigato gusaimas. Because already the games are too fast, and I think a lot of the Road of Ages champions 
uh, you know, Gragas and so forth, they're already like enjoying laning into Azir, and that's already been like a problem for Azir uh, because he can't shuffle them and so 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 forth. Um, this is uh, you know rough. Luckily, we are still on 13.4, so all Azir enjoyers out there can watch some final pro play games of Azir. But I think this champion will just be a scaling demon. He is going to be better after two items and three items, better than he felt before. So he's going to fit that mage theme. Item one, two, three, very, very strong. But I think in terms of laning, probably you're going to look to Oriana, Victor, Syndra more, because the early lane phase is so in inherently important. Jungle changes make games longer. No, no. I don't think so. Games are fast due to how dragons work. And how valuable dragons are. Dragons are too valuable for games to be quick. Games are not quick because teams die level 1, 2, 3. In a lot of games in LPL, in LCK, they, you don't get kills. Because all of those ganks are predictable and you can play around them already with the ward change. Right? And the sweep it change. And the, the games are fast due to how dragons work. And the value of Rift Herald. It's like you you are 1, 2, 3 dragons ahead. It, it, it just creates an immense pressure and I think this rework is f fair because exactly as Davka Dakvavka uh, is writing in chat this champion has been far too strong for far too long very strong lane phase very good scaling has mobility in his kit very you know very OP uh, at least Victor right Victor is very strong in lane but at least he can get fucked right he can get ganked he can get fucked he's not so mobile right and he needs to scale up through through points in his fucking system, you know, in his fucking whatever, you know. Finally, it'll be playable in Soul Queue? Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe. But maybe on the lower end, more. I think they've made this champion a little bit more newbie friendly, is what I would say. Because you don't need to, you don't feel that bad about not winning your lane. Because if you lose lane with Azir in pro play, you can go fuck yourself most of the time. Really. Caitlyn. Base armor down, base attack damage down. This is a little percentile nerf, right? They want to drop the Caitlyn win ratio of 1%, which is fine. Okay. I think Caitlyn deserves a little nerf, right? Very high presence, very high prio, strong champ. And also benefited a lot from the AD carry item changes. Is it a big enough change? No, but I think it's right there, you know, in the sphere of... In the sphere of, like, uh, you know... It's like... Yeah, deserved. Yeah, Azir, I think it's dead. Don't fucking play Azir, honestly. This is this is like, this is the change for the Azir players that were low elo and want to play Azir. Nice. Fizz, W mana restoration increased. Mana restored. This is one hundred percent of the mana cost. Okay. All right. Hey, what do you think of Yumi? I wasn't here. Uh, I think for solo queue. I think Yumi is going to be fucking annoying to play against. In pro play, I, I doubt we will see it. But in solo queue, fucking ban it. And I said, talked about build, just, just look in, in the replay. I don't want to talk about it more. Uh, playful trickster damage. Mm, 10 damage increase. Okay, okay. Okay, that's that's nice. Mana cost down. That's also pretty nice. That's, that's okay. Uh, okay. Is this getting me excited to play Fizz? Mm, not really. Not really. Fizz got kind of fucked. It's like, how, 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 what is the play pattern of Fizz players? Fizz players, they get level 6, and when they can't kill you, they go somewhere else and kill you. And that was the only way they kept enough pace in the game to be powerful. And this is their way of saying, yo, Fizz, your roams have gotten worse because we nerfed jungle, and you inherently got, you suffer because of that. But, we're gonna give you a little buff. And I don't think this is like, wow, exciting enough for me to be like, yeah, let's play Fizz. Oh yeah, Fizz, maybe you can play into Syndra, maybe you can play into Azir, you have the right jungler for it. Could be cool, right? Could be fine. But uh, it comes with so much risk. Because Fizz has so many natural counters. He's like, oh, the enemy has a tank? Well, I'm useless. Fuck my life. Usually in the spots where you want to pick Fizz, you're like, wow, this is such a good Fizz game. 
There's like so many other champions you can pick. All right, Gangplank. I thought Gangplank was so OP. I was surprised. I was surprised that this champion got away for so long. Bonus true damage nerfed. Well, it's a big hefty nerf. Deserved because fucking you, you were cut and sliced and on fire and you were like. It's like GPs could fucking flash auto you and Q you without barrels and you just fucking burn to death. Uh, which was crazy because the damage scales based on critical chance and this, this like, sometimes you, you got three items with GP, you mouse over your damage. You're like, oh, my passive does 702 damage. Well, that's crazy. That's, that's normal. And that's like fucking people playing Gale Force GP and slicing your, giving you a Glasgow smile. Just like that. So this is deserve nerf. All players will now be able to see the number of kegs Gangplank has available beneath his mana bar. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Cooldown also. Wow. That's a pretty big one. Four seconds. This is, this, this is a this is a big nerf. And this is this is like one of those nerfs as well that just helps noobs. You know? And if GP is dominating low elo solo queue and they want to make a change like that, I don't mind. You know? Like, okay. Attack speed growth increased. Ooh. Alright. This is this is this is interesting. This is interesting. This is this is a decent buff. Zap mana cost down. Decent buff. 40% slow. 10, 10. That's that's nice. That's nice. Our super mega death rocket. Okay, we have some steals. You know, you, what you have to pay attention to is, right, is Aphelios is back. Caitlyn's getting nerfed. Trash is buffed. Annie's in the picture. Everything lives in symbiosis. Jinx likes Annie's support. You guys remember the old school combo of Jinx and Annie? You just press your buttons, you burst someone, boom. You remember? Reckless, yellow star. Annie, Annie Jim bot, I mean Annie Jinx bot, sorry, right? I think, you know, the, the, the big changes is that Aphelios is in the picture. Aphelios was already, uh, you know, a champion that did well into Jinx, but Jinx already or always did well in lower leagues because people couldn't leverage uh, the strength of uh, the homie. But I, I, I think Jinx is cool, you know? At least this is not like some crazy buff that is like, oh, Jinx is going to be big bang, right? I think this is gonna be cool. Another thing that I think was very beneficial for Jinx was that um, you know she doesn't need to go. Um, it's like I don't know if the mana changes are like the, the mana change is decent because maybe it allows you to go like triumph or maybe you know something else. Fuck, when it's so cold outside, my, my nose always gets so itchy, guys. That's why I'm fucking itching. Like the skin around my nose is dry, so it's like it's fucking gets itchy. So sorry for doing this fucking thing all the time. I don't do cocaine. Cannon. Cannon, cannon, cannon. Cannon. Q thundering shuriken. All right. One second down. Four. 75. Ooh, AP scaling up. Okay. A range indicator will be visible to cannon when an enemy champion because marked. Damage to minions modifier. Okay. All right. That's, that's like cool. All right. Well, it's like, doesn't make me think that Cannon's gonna be super insane, but, uh, you know, Cannon, it's like, this is, this is pretty decent. It's like, buffs like this allows you to one-shot the wave and push a lot faster, and that's very good, right? Uh, I think that the AP scaling on Q is pretty decent, and the Q cooldown down early levels gives you maybe some flexibility in what you want to max, but I think that, uh, uh, all in all, right? Ooh, actually, I didn't see the Q damage base damage up. You, you're right, you're right, I missed that. That is pretty hefty. That is pretty big. Wow, that is pretty big. Okay, I think Cannon is really strong. <laughs> I missed that. Thank you very much, uh, Adrian or not. Thank you very much. I missed that. I missed that. This is this is pretty decent. I like that. Okay. Another thing, right, is, um, you know... Doran shield nerfs, all of these sustained nerfs is something that Cannon also enjoys. Leblanc. Killing a unit with either part of Sigil 
Killing a unit, so that could be anything. Restores 100% of the monocles and 30% of the spell remaining. And the cool thing about this, right? The cool thing about this is that um, you can create circumstances where where you will you might just make some Leblanc montages happen. Because you'll be like incentivized, like let's say you one shot you last you lasted someone, like that like having this reset mechanic in there with the Q sigil of malice. You know, that's, that's interesting. That's like interesting, you know? Very, very interesting. So, I think that can be like a world where we see that happen, right? That can definitely happen. Um, mana cost, okay. I, I think this is a very big buff for... for no. RQ will now mimic the bonus damage to minions of the original ability. You think R doesn't get reset? You think R doesn't get reset? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're right. Only the damage maybe. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. And like, if, if it, R reset does sound broken. I think this is a massive buff for LB. I think this is a very big buff for LB. Either way. Either way, I think if if it's true that it works the same for R, I think it's a super big deal. But I think already this is a big buff for, for LP. Pantheon. Health region down. Attack speed up. Okay, so he scales better with attack speed. Um, Q cooldown down. Wow. I'm thinking jungle, jungle, jungle. Jungle, jungle, jungle. Pantheon jungle. Could be nice for Pantheon jungle. This could be big for Pantheon jungle. This can be very, very big for Pantheon Jungle. The Q cooldown down is um, pretty big. And the Q tap wind up time? Bro, this is also really big, I think. At least on first glance, it seems pretty big. These seem like really nice buffs. E, you can just max it last. Fuck this ability, no problem. I think this is very interesting. Pantheon might be back with this. I think Pantheon Jungle is my first inclination. Kiana. Q base damage up. So same buffs as the fucking Fizz buffs. Um, Kiana. I, yeah. I don't know what to say about Kiana. I think durability patch for Fizz, Kiana, all of these champs, they just hate it. They hate it. All right. Attack damage growth decreased, Q base damage decreased. I haven't been seeing a lot of Ramos, but I guess he's just a low elo ma machine. Rumble. E magic re resist shred increased, total shred on two hits increased. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Damn. 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 Let's see the synopsis here. Well, I, I like. Rumble is doing worse. <laughs> okay. On well, first glance, I was like, oh, this is a pretty decent buff. But of course, this is a very small sample size. Take it with a grain of salt, right? It has a very small sample size. Just... It's just, you, you guys are saying more people pick it, but it's like the, the play rate increased so little, you know? But yeah, of course. It's like, the, the play rate doubled, so it's fair. Like, we, we don't need to look at the statistic because it doesn't matter, right? My first impression was like, wow, this, this seems pretty neat. But also we need to think, like, how often do you hit two E's on the same target? Like sometimes you ult before you do anything else and so forth. Like there, there's layers to this, right? And early game, it gives you just a smaller, a couple of points of, of damage. But yeah, I, I, I guess it doesn't get me excited enough to think, wow, Rumble will be played in properly no matter what now. 
Samira, yeah, the last time when I when we had the nerfs of Samira, I thought they were pretty big, very extensive, and now they've changed. They reverted the nerf just a little bit, uh, but I think it still matters. Trindamir, health growth and attack damage growth. Okay, so that doesn't make me like, wow, now I want to play Trindamir. It's like a percentage buff. Okay. Oh, AP Twitch, you're one of my favorite champions. You're also overpowered. You're also incredibly frustrating to play against if you don't have to actually lane. Says you could be anywhere at any time. At least Evelyn has to wait until level 6. That's the worst part of it, honestly. Back off, back off of Le Evelyn's niche, you jerk. I'd say you stink, but you'd probably like that. Ugh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, um, okay, okay, okay. I think AP Twitch is terrible for the game, but I still think it's pretty strong. Zaya's buff in 13.1 ended up end going a bit too far. I think Zaya's play rate has been so fucking high uh, in pro play and, and uh, regular play, like itemizations, goods, and so forth. Um, this is a nerf that uh, makes sense. Keep in mind, this is might seem low on first glance, but it's pretty big. Uh, considering how her blade color works with additional blades, right? So, this this is the nerfs definitely matters, and um, it's, it's it's a decent nerf, deserved, I'd say. But still, things I will be strong. Morning mist bonus damage from ghouls decreased. Fuck man, we'll never get fucking Yorick and pro play. Ghoul bonus damage. Hmm, I don't even know what the fuck this means. I'm not gonna lie and sit here and pretend that I know Yorick inside and out, but I don't even I didn't even know Ghoul, he had ghoul bonus damage. But I'm assuming that when you note this applied up to eight times per ghoul. Uh let me see this shit. So so how does Yorick Mori work? Yorick Mori. Yeah, I've seen that Prolic Laws build. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's like it stacks up to eight times. What the fuck does that mean? Morning Mist. The target takes 30% damage from eight attacks by Mistwalkers and continually continually raises a Mistwalker from each nearby grave. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is what's nerfed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've, se I've seen the lethality, Yorick, but I just didn't understand what the fuck that meant. I don't know. I don't know when you get Eid by Yorick. That the next eight attacks from the ghouls does do more damage. I didn't fucking know this. I had no clue. Now I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Base magic resist decreased. E cooldown decreased late. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I am not so in tune with what's going on with Zed, so we shall see how that plays out. Alright, counter jungling. Counter jungling, junglers deal 20% increased damage to their own camps and scuttle all camps. Thank you. Thank you very much. I loved it when I died doing enemy blue and it was just a mistake. I, I, I loved when that was part of, part of the game. We introduced the jungle cheat system in preseason, which was a large influx of gold into the jungle and pulled a fair bit of gold away from individual camps. This swung the meta heavily towards gankers. Yes, 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 it did. You just kept collecting those biscuits and... Um, there was no reward for clearing your camps because you always had the biscuits. The biscuits was a catch-up mechanic. It was guaranteed gold that you would always generate and you would not lose it because you wouldn't clear your camps. So thank God. Um, Blue Sentinel, Krugs, all right. Um, Krugs Medium, okay. A greater Merc Wolf, Crimson Large Raptor, okay. Uh, can we count real quick how much gold you get in a full clear? It's um 
how much gold do you get in a full clear? Let me see now. How much more gold do you get in a full clear? Did anyone do the math yet? It's 10 gold per camp. Mm, I know that that's not true already. You guys are lying. After full clear in real game, you end up with 900 gold if you don't buy a pot. Okay, that's a big deal. Alright. That's a big deal. So your first base will just feel a lot better. Because what did a lot of junglers do? They started raptors, and then they felt incentivized to stay on the map until raptors spawned again. So they could at least buy like a pickaxe when they base. Right? Which is very important. But now, with this change, you can actually buy a pickaxe. Or you can buy some, you know, something, which is which is good, Big, good change. Like it felt, it feels like shit. You full clear and you base with six hundred gold. Like what the fuck do you buy with six hundred fifty gold? Feels ass, right? Feels like ass. Still no dirk like last season. Uh, last season you didn't get dirk either. That was just specific. Like it was very different, right? Because the jungle item just. Uh, the jungle item just, of course, cost less. It cost 350, now it costs 450. So futures market, it's like you have options to go boots. You have options to maybe do a clear where you involve your raptors and you kill raptors again and you get crap. You know, you have, you just have options to buy good items. Wasn't it because of future market? Yes, future market too. Future market was definitely a part of it, but you could uh, just uh, not buy refillable and uh, you would have... Um, more gold as well, right? But future market was a big part of that. But yeah, buying full of city boots, buying buying these items definitely makes a difference. Very big change for jungle, right? In terms of power that they have. Junglers can get very ahead of their enemies by sapping early lane experience on ganks. Jungler lane experience, 75% of total experience. Okay. So um okay. That's good. Sweeping lens, cooldown down. That's interesting, because I think with this change to the sweeper lens, placing a ward and then getting sweeper, you will have sweeper later. You will have sweeper later. So you'll not be able to sweep level 1 as effectively as before. So it will be more of a decision to start with sweeper in comparison to not starting with sweeper. Right? So basically, you aren't capable of placing a ward, buying sweeper, and then sweeping right away. Ability power. Yeah, that's, that's weird. It does say uh, ability power. <laughs> so it's like uh, yellow trinket is very buffed. I think you should be able to secure yourself. That's like um, important. Okay. Yeah, another, another layer of this, right? Keep in mind that um, this might sound like a very small detail, but you this also impacts laners taking your camps because at least when it was very biscuit heavy and cookie heavy the the fucking treat that you got the gold was generated from there but this is above to lanes too when they take your camps so now uh players have another incentive to take your camps away because like wow we get gold you know hello everyone Cosmic Drive has been a niche and unpopular for a while now. The stat change aims to make this item a more attractive purchase for damage-focused mages. I think this is a pretty cool one. I think this is a good change. The, the, the AP you get from this, like this will feel like a very good ability haste item. Right? Especially when you feel the need to get sorcerer shoes. But as long as ability haste boots are in, are in the world, we can... I think we make this into emote mode only. Good emote only, because I don't want to get spoiled on the K-Corp result. Don't spoil me on the K-Corp result. I will, you guys can only do emotes from now on. I think this is a very positive change. When you get sorcerer shoes and you are juicing, you know, really, really good. Really, really good. 
Plated steel caps. Now I feel cheated. I feel very cheated. I thought an auto is an auto, no matter the code. I feel very cheated about this. Steel caps now looks for all auto attacks with damage reduction rather than auto attacks tagged with just auto attack and nothing else. I thought SGOQ was reduced by Tabi. I thought so many spells were reduced by Tabi, but apparently not. That's like, bro, I'm, I'm in shock that it didn't work. I feel very cheated. I bought Tabi in cases where I thought it was good, but it turns out it wasn't. I feel very screwed over. What a scam. What a scam. This is false advertising. This is like FTX level scam. Crazy. But this is a very big bug fix. Very big bug fix, I'd say. Um, Freak explained this to me that a lot of abilities are coded very differently. And they are making a lot of cleanups for, to, to make more consistency and make it a lot easier to deploy changes in the game. So that's a very nice change. I like this. God bless. God bless. I think considering how old PCDR shoes and uh, mercs being necessary, like plate steel caps getting this buff is nice. I think Seraph's Embrace was definitely a really strong item. We are, we are in shield meta. Shields being there, it's like crazy. I think um, this is a deserved nerf. I think this item was very strong. I can put this in my S tier when I uh, rate the items. Grasp of the Undying. Percent of maximum health eating. 1.7%. Oh wow, you get more maximum health. Holy, this is good. The scaling, the scaling stones. Scaling stones. I, I think that in the cases you wanted to play Grasp, you're still going to play Grasp. Uh, I don't think this is going to change things. I think this is, you know... It's like um, you, you have a flat heal. I'm trying to understand this. It's like percent of maximum health healing, and now it's like flat. So it's stronger for non-tanks? Because there's a flat value here? Okay. I, I feel like this is kind of counterintuitive what they're saying, that there's a flat value healing. Um, very strange. Triumph. 10% of maximum missing health, and then 2 of maximum of 5%, plus 5% of missing health. Okay. Even breakpoint around the 35% HP mark. Well, this definitely got really frustrating in some cases where people survived with this, so... I understand why this has changed. Arm adjustments, we don't care about. I think that's it, guys. Let's take a look at the skins. Dodge. 5 LP, 10 LP, I think it makes sense considering LP gains are higher, and the value of LP is... Overall less. Broken Covenant. Uh, this is just looks like Elden Ring to me. This is just Elden Ring now. It's like, oh, they played Elden Ring. Let's make some Elden Ring skins. This looks like a fucking Elden Ring. Uh, this just looks straight out of Elden Ring. Let's be honest. And then we have uh, this. This looks also straight out of Elden Ring. This looks like... Uh, this This is just... You know... Looks like it's fucking from... What's it in Bloodborne? <laughs> it's just... <laughs> From all the Soulsborne games, we're just getting the champs. This also looks like Elden Ring. It's just, this this whole theme just looks like Elden Ring. And I, I'm not a hater. I love Elden Ring. So, this also looks very Elden Ring-ish to me. Um, okay, Jesus. Bro, what game is this? This this looks like something from Outer Lost Ark. But this, this skin is gorgeous. Very nice. Very nice.